This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. In this video, I'm gonna give you five reasons why I do not paint or epoxy showers or bathtubs. So stay tuned for this video. So here's the first reason. This is reason number one why I do not paint or epoxy showers. This was a project we started working on yesterday and we used the product and it came in spray cans or a actual cord where you can brush and roll it. And I started off by spraying this thing and I just figured, okay, it's just a simple little spray can. We masked it all off, got you know nine inch masking and stuff all around. I began spraying it and I don't think I've ever sprayed any product ever in my career that smelled so bad and was as strong as it was. I had to actually get an organic vape, vapor respirator, wear that, and I still smelled it extremely bad and I started getting a headache using it but then outside I kind of closed the door here vented out the uh, this window right here if I didn't have a place to vent it then that would become a real problem but it also took and smelled up the whole house where other people in the house and other parts of the house began getting sick and getting headaches from the smell of the product it was extremely bad never smelled anything worse than that in my career ever so that's reason number one why I would never do this again so reason number two why I do not paint showers or epoxy showers or bathtubs is the dust. So I began spraying this and I figured, okay, it's just a couple spray cans that we're gonna spray this thing with. And for one thing, it took way more than just two spray cans. But I started spraying it and I've actually never seen in my career a spray can that created more dust than these spray cans. I, because uh, of the dust and actually the smell, I started, I was venting it out this window and it was pulling all the dust, but uh, after about two spray cans, I began realizing how bad this was, but I was already, already into the project. And I'm gonna show you right here on the side where we were venting it and what it's done. It's created so much dust in this bathroom, I'm gonna have to repaint the walls. I'm gonna have to spend probably two hours cleaning this whole entire mess. So if I actually ever attempted to do this again, you would have to just completely cover this whole thing with plastic. So it's completely unreasonable to do it. There was the option of brushing and rolling it but I was just like and um, just uh, uh, doing that method and not spray cans but I thought well shoot how convenient we'll just use spray cans and I know some people are gonna probably want to know why didn't I just use an HVLP sprayer that's typically what we would do is use an HVLP sprayer to spray it with but there there's companies that have come out with these kits now that are just spray cans and or a quart where you can brush it on so I just wanted to give that kit a try and I'll never do it again so I'm gonna walk you over here where I was actually venting this thing. I was actually venting it out the window. I had, you know, a fan blowing there and hopefully I can get a close up of this to show you the dust. This is just absolutely incredible. This is what the walls look like in here. You can see all this white dust, all of these walls and it's just completely, you can see up here, we're running a bathroom fan too, and you can see how cake that is with us. That's all gonna have to be cleaned. So here's what the sink looks like. We had some stuff. You can see all this dust right here, how bad that was. The whole sink is just caked with dust, even though we had this place masked and covered with visqueen. So now I'm going to talk about reason number three why I would never paint a bathtub or shower again. And that's actually how the finish actually turned out on this thing. And I have to say, I've actually been painting for quite a few years, so I like to think that I'm, I'm kind of a decent painter. But I attempted to spray this stuff on there and the spray cans were an absolute nightmare. What was happening is I was getting a rough finish. It wasn't gelling out well enough. And, and when I did get it to a point where it gel out and smooth out and give it a glossy finish, then it started running. So then I tried to actually use the brush on method where I used one of the kits that had a quart and I started brushing on. And I would have to also think that I can actually brush pretty well because I've been using a brush and a roller for quite a few years now, but I just kept getting runs everywhere on this bathtub. And no matter how hard I tried and no matter how I worked the product, if I put it on too, whoops, video card got filled. So I had to jump to a new SD card. But no matter how hard I tried working this stuff and brushing with it, I just couldn't keep it from running. This stuff is just, it dries really, really quick, but it actually sags and runs really, really easy. Absolute nightmare. I've never used it again. So reason number four for why I would actually never attempt to do this project again 
is I went through, I, I followed the manufacturer's instructions on how to actually clean this thing. I, I followed it exactly how they said, and you gotta clean this thing really thoroughly, you know, twice. And I went way above and beyond what it actually said to actually clean this thing. So I cleaned it I think either three or four times, but then we also sanded it and buffed it like really, really well to make sure that it had a nice profile on it, get something to bite. And lo and behold, the bottom of the tub completely fish-eyed really bad, no matter, you know, after all that cleaning. And now the thing is actually completely ruined. I'm gonna show you what the fish-eye looks down here. And the only thing I can think is, you know, there's contaminants in the, in the fiberglass or something that once I put the finish on that it was drawing it up through the fiberglass. I don't know, but we completely, you know, scrubbed and cleaned this thing for, I don't know, an hour and a half, several hours cleaning it went through multiple cleaners um, sanding pads steel wool did everything we we're supposed to do I thought I had this thing 100% clean because I ran into a situation before where a tub like this fish eyed and I'm like this is not gonna happen to me again I'm gonna get this thing completely clean and completely dry and with all that work it didn't work I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now so if we can see those dark spots in those round that's all fish eyes right there. Those are all spots where the product beaded away from the surface. So we can see right here, this is where the shower door was attached right there and there was silicone and we completely scraped all the silicone off, scrubbed it, sanded it, cleaned it with uh, multiple different cleaners to make sure there was no silicone residue on there anymore and it's still fish eyed. So reason number five why I would actually never attempt to do this again, after all my hard work, this spraying, what I noticed when I was spraying it, that I could never get it to actually like gel out and make it glossy and smooth. What I what I've noticed, it was gonna be rough. I can see the flashing that the spray cans were creating and then the spray cans were also spitting a lot. So was, um, I'd have to keep taking it over here and spraying it on uh, my masking paper and it just kept spitting and all those spits were creating roughness. I knew eventually that this finish, when it dried, if I felt it, it was gonna feel like sandpaper. So then I went to the different method to uh, try to brush and roll it, but all those places where it was spitting and stuff, if I feel this finish, it actually feels rough. There are some places on here where it actually feels nice and uh, glossy and shiny, but then there's places that are extremely rough on this bathtub, and that's just gonna make an absolute nightmare for cleaning ult ultimately in the end. So just the old, it looks all pure white from here, but um, it looks pure white and glossy, but when you rub your hand on it, a lot of it, it just completely feels like sandpaper. And no matter what I did, if I was, you, you know, the spray, that's a huge, large area to spray with a spray can. I think the spray cans would be more practical for maybe some small thing like a sink, but I'll tell you, I would never even attempt to do a sink either with this because just all the contaminants, chemicals, and stuff like that that are in, in that, you know, enter a sink like that, you just never know if you get them off. I know this is different, it's fiberglass, I don't know how that's gonna be different than, say, a porcelain sink, which we have right here, w whether, you know, contaminants don't penetrate that porcelain, I'm not sure, I don't know a lot about that stuff. All I know is this thing fish-eyed really bad. Luckily, the shower is mine. <laughs> And so, since it's mine, it's not gonna cost me you know, anything, but unfortunately, it just I'm not happy with it, and it's just gonna be a nightmare to clean eventually. So there's my experience with you know, painting a fiberglass shower or bathtub. I don't know if anybody else is out there has actually tried this and actually had some success doing it. I would love to hear your comments in the comments below if it's worked for you or what methods that you went about doing it or if you actually had a bad experience too and what products you've used out there that were good or bad. Just let us know in the comments. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have a good experience and maybe it was my lack of experience and lack of doing this kind of stuff. It's something we've always shied away and not done. I know there's people that actually specialize in doing this stuff, so I know it can be done 
and done well, and actually uh, looked really good because I've seen some of these jobs that are done well, but the people charge quite a bit of money to do it. And, and I mean, we're talking, I think it's you know about $500 that do something like this, where I actually got one of those kits, and those kits were actually you know fairly inexpensive. I don't think those kits were more than um, you know, 50, 60 dollars, but the, the kit, I just couldn't imagine ever, you know, trying to use that kit ever again. So, 